Hey y'all, welcome to another video from Reckonow.com. So today I'm going to be making a dump pouch for my saddle. This was inspired by a post I saw on SaddleHunter.com from Scale. I've been looking to make my own dump pouch and I really like the pattern. I'll put a link in the description so you can see his post. To get started, you want to cut a 21 and a half by 12 and a half section of fleece. And you want the stretch to go laterally, not vertically. If you weren't aware, fleece stretches in one direction, so you just want to make sure that stretch is out rather than down. And then you're just going to want to fold over the corners. I use this grid and you can see I went over one inch and then three inches down. You're going to want to do that on both sides. And then you're just going to want to stitch that in place. So make sure you do a back stitch and to hold it in place. And then what I like to do is slowly go forward. I'll use the pedal and then I'll just kind of hand turn the knob. And then you're going to want to do the other side. So once you get done, it's going to look like this. So you have a, just a clean stitch at the side. And you can see I've pinned this, but just fold over the edge. And then you're going to run a, want to run a single stitch all the way to the end. This just keeps the edge from un unraveling or curling too much. It'll look like this. So I'm not an expert by any means, um, but... What you want to do then is pin down the channel that will be used for the shock cord. So pin that down and then you'll run another stitch that's really close to your existing stitch. And so you'll have two parallel stitches and it'll look like this. So the top will be the channel for the shock cord. So once you have that in place, uh, this is how I, I altered mine. I don't use uh, snaps for my pouch. I actually just use these slides that will go into the webbing of your saddle. So I cut two 10 inch sections and once you cut those, you'll just take a torch or, or a lighter and, and just sear the edges so they don't unravel. And then you can get these tri bar slides. I have them linked in the blog post. And you're going to make two of these and these are going to be used to hold the pouch on your saddle. So to find the center, I'll just measure and I take one of them and put it right in the center and then I just kind of roll it over and you won't one length or you want one width of webbing in between both straps. So I use some uh, double sided tape to hold them in place. And then again, I center it and then fold it over. And this is called a box X stitch. I actually linked to it in the blog post. So when else doing it, um, like I said, I'm a pretty novice uh, sewer on the sewing machine. Uh, so you're welcome to check out that other video. But the goal here is you have a pattern to your stitch you bury the needle, you lift the foot, you turn it, and you make one continuous X that stitches the, the webbing tightly to the fleece. And you can see again, I'm a big fan of using the pedal until I get close to the edge and then I stop and then I just hand turn the needle. That way I can make sure I stop right where I need to because you do want to go as close to the edge as possible uh, to get a uh, firm hold on the fleece. So I made the second X, you'll see here I'll bury the needle, lift the foot, and then I'm going to just sew down the side. So I'll just let this let you follow the pattern. Um, it might be a good idea to stop and, and start or to look at that other video of how to do this stitch. But once you get done, it's it's extremely solid. You've probably seen this stitch on like climbing straps and and any any other kind of webbing that's sewn together, you'll see this box X, X stitch and it looks like this. So once you have that done, um, you just want to match up the corners. But again, you can see that the inside the inside is out here, and we'll pin it because we'll sew it, and then we'll flip the bag inside out, um, and that'll you know form the pouch. So what I'm doing is I'm sewing the edges in one continuous line. Again, burying the needle and then finishing it up on the other side. And I actually make two passes because all the weight's going to be in on this stitch. So it'll look like this, two parallel passes. So this is a trick I learned from scale. So like you flatten out that corner and you're going to run two stitches across the corner. And this is going to allow us to square up the bottom to make it more of a, you know, an open pouch. So run one stitch across the corner. And again, be sure to back stitch because you want to lock this in place. Here I am turning again by hand. It's just easier. And then run that second stitch. 
So now you have essentially squared off the corner and it'll look like this when you're done. So now you can take those corners and cut on the outside of them because you've now closed up the bag and this will square up the corners and give you that look of a kind of a climbing pouch. So that's that's the hardest part. Now we're just going to use some shock cord to make a, you know, a way to close the bag. So this is some 1/8 shock cord and I'm just, you know, slowly feeding it through the bag. Then I got some of these stoppers. Uh, I actually got these at Hobby Lobby and you've probably seen these on like drawstrings and things like that. Um, just feed them both through, tie an overhand knot, and then I'll singe the shock cord just so it doesn't unravel. And that's all there is to it. Um, I actually made two of these bags. Uh, they work great. Again, it's important that you want the stretch going laterally and not vertically. And this is how I attach them to the molly. Um, rather than going up and letting it hang down, I pull them down and then fold the bag over the top of the saddle. So you get the tension on the strap and the slide that holds it in place on the molly. That's all there is to it. Let me know what you think.